It's time for our Musk Minute. SpaceX is ramping up its plans for flying people to the moon. And that is today's Musk Minute. SpaceX president and COO Gwen Shotwell has outlined a timeline for when SpaceX will start flying people on its next generation rocket to the moon and Mars. The company raised more than $1.3 billion this year to build the Starship rocket and its high-speed satellite internet network Starlink. Uh, she said, we want Starship in orbit next year. We want to land it on the moon before 2022 with cargo and with people shortly thereafter, Shotwell told investors at a conference. Mm. Guys, just ambitious. seemed like I was going to say in a very ambitious timeline. What do you make? Yes, it's not going to happen. But SpaceX and Elon Musk and his people say things all the time that they have a right. It doesn't matter. Yeah, they just say things. I just love that her name is Gwen Shotwell. Like that is like, like so. A moonshot. Right. It's yeah. a I'm head of our moonshot division. It's a great. Oh, I, it's an aptonym. I like names that go with your business. <laughs> Vocabulary word. Study that for the SATs, kids. But, I mean, another point though, to kind of bring this back into the business angle, is that it's amazing to see what SpaceX is doing in contrast to what uh, Virgin Galactic yeah, is doing which today. Is which is Vir they're right. They're IPOing. They're listing, and uh, I think that represents the, these kind of two diverging ways to raise capital. Obviously, SpaceX doesn't feel the need to go, to go public or be listed on a public exchange because they have so much capital <laughs> right now. Yeah, These comments were made at an investor conference, so obviously they feel like they have enough money to send someone to the moon. I mean, that that just shows how much money is really flowing in the Valley to be able to do this type of capital. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I don't know. Uh, it makes me really nervous <laughs> to even think about getting on one of those. And then nobody's talking about Blue Origin, which I was is just about to say, let's, let's remember Bezos is in this business. Yeah. Um, Brian, when you say SpaceX doesn't feel the need to be public, I would say not just doesn't feel the need, but Elon Musk would like to not be. Uh, we know how much he hates, you know, reporting earnings, having uh, shorts Imagine. and bears, talking about the stock, uh, wanting to take Tesla private. I think would much well, I, prefer to not be in charge of any public. Control. I don't want to conflate this with, you know, bringing in WeWork again. God help me if I have to say that word again. But the thing is, we understand now just how much money is flowing in in in, in, the, in private markets, right? And when you are raising that money in private markets, it's a lot easier to go to an investor and sell a literal moonshot like, and raise money still than putting that in the public market and letting investors publicly yeah. decide that. And going right? to space is so expensive. And it, but it's really cool to see big entrepreneurs take on this endeavor. Um, I think people do get really excited about it. But I mean, going back to Branson, though, Virgin Galactic, they actually have people who've already purchased the $250,000 tickets. Now they're going to like the edge of space orbit. I don't know Final the exact frontier. terms. They're not like going to the moon right now or anything. But I mean, if you can't go to the moon, why go? At space? one point, they were selling the tickets Just using Bitcoin. So, man, maybe you got a good deal back in the day. We understand and recall the lessons of we. So we. thank you for mentioning yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is funny. Um, I appreciate, you know, and, and all cynicism aside, I always have my sort of cynics hat on when we talk about these companies and these CEOs. But I do appreciate those few CEOs who are focused on things like this because it is something that's not going to come to fruition really until probably after they're gone. Yeah. You know, when we talk about Jeff Bezos, it's sort of widely understood that uh, space is actually the most important thing to him. Colonizing Mars, I mean, that's like the most, that's the thing he most wants to help happen. Could but be the story of the next generation. Won't happen in his lifetime, exactly. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.